Man, got around, OG Silver back here, and today, I have a tale of victory, I have a tale of glory, how few strong, dedicated, focused men decided to turn their life around and apply what they learned in the streets to corporate America. Guys, the topic of today's video is how to transform yourself from a gangster to a businessman. Hey guys, let me tell you something, man. We all make mistakes in this life, homie. Every last one of us, man, you know what I mean? Just to let you know, man, that's uh that's basically how I got a lot of my jobs, man, when I got out of the Pinta homes, when I got out of prison homes. Because, man, like, at first I was putting down, you know, my parole officers, like, hey, you better not lie, you better put down yes for felony. And I went to all these, like, how to get a job places, man. Like, I went to diff all these different career centers, man. Yeah, you put down yes, I got a felony, we'll explain. I did all that, man. I wasn't getting a fucking job, man. And my parole officer was sweating me, dude, like, because I got high. I got high level parole, man. Yeah. Meaning I did some bad shit, Holmes. Muy mal, Holmes. I did some bad shit, Vato. And, um, yeah, they had me on high parole, man. I was on parole for three years, I mean, A lot of people do parole for a year. I don't know about six months. I know for a year. Motherfucker do parole for, for a year and get off. I did three. And he was sweating me the whole fucking three years, Holmes. It was bad. But the point I'm making is, um, I learned from that how to really associate myself with people that were looking to help me do positive things, man. Because here's the deal, guys. And I'm just saying from the stories I've heard, I don't know these people personally, but like when you look at like the Jay-Z story, and if you don't know that, I'm going to put it in the... Um, I'm going to put in the description here, the Jay-Z story, and the 50 Cent story. I'm going to put these in the description because, to me, they epitomize, or they typify, what I'm explaining to you in this video, how you can go from being a gangster to a businessman. Because a lot of businesses, man, they're a front for gangsters. I'm not trying to tell you to do that. That's not what this video is about, but I'm just letting you know. Like, if you're in the street on me... And you're getting your money, man, and you handle your business, and you're doing your dirt. And this is what I call dirt, man, so don't 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 misunderstand me. I know we all got to get money, man. That's the whole thing, like, you know, DMX says in the movie Belly. I'm, I'm going to recommend that to you as well, Belly. You know, he's like, get that money, get that money, right? I got it. But see, here's me. Now, I'm not saying in the past. Now, I have a moral conscience when it comes to getting money. So it's like this, man. Here's, 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 a, here's a line. And let's say for all you people out there in YouTube land, let's just say the right side, you know, we got an angel on there that, that represents high morals. And then on the left side, we got the El Diablo, right? Which recommends like malo thought, you know, just bad intentions, man, right? With my moral compass, anything that's dealing with stuff on the left-hand side, I'm not doing it, man. It's not that serious to me because I'm in a position where I don't have to. So let's revert back in the past when I was on crack, man, and I was strung out, man. And I was robbing and pillaging and just taking, man. And I'm not proud of it. You know, hopefully, uh, you know, the, the, if there's some guys on, uh, some guys watching the, the video here that I've robbed in the past and I pistol whipped you and tied you up and all that fucking crazy shit, man. Made you suck on my pistol and my shotgun and shit. I want to apologize, man, because... Um, you know, I'm going to tell you why I did it, man, because I felt like you guys, you know, what you selling your crack to me, and you, you know, you didn't force me to smoke it, but if you guys weren't selling it, I wouldn't have smoked it, so I just rationalized, like, oh, you motherfuckers turned me into a crack monster, bitch, then suffer the wrath, suffer the wrath of the monster, right? And so then after I robbed enough drug dealers, dude, it was so, and I'm not bragging, it was just so easy to do because I was stupid. And I was willing to die because, man, man, crack, man, I would beam up 
And I know it wasn't in heaven, man. I felt like I was, I was beaming me up, but I felt like it beamed me down to hell because I felt like I was beamed into hell because it was just crazy. So I felt like I was dead anyway. So it was very easy for me to rob him because I just had my pistola, Holmes. And I'd be like, hey, man, I want to buy a couple of ounces, man. And they'd be like, hey, Holmes, you got the money, Holmes? And I'd be like, let me see, let me, hey, let me see, let me see the failure, Holmes. Let me see it, man. Let me see the dope, man. And when they pull it out, then I just they break yourself, man. And I just hit them with the pistol so they know I wasn't fucking playing. Lay on the fucking floor and I'm taking all the drugs, right? And I might even shoot a dude in the leg, man, just to let them know I wasn't playing, right? And then just the reputation I had, Holmes, just because I was stupid. I was a local, vato loco. I was stupid, Holmes. So after I did that like three, four, five times, what I'm trying to say, I had enough money and drugs where I didn't have to do that. Now, yeah, I did suffer ramifications where I was kind of caught off guard. Like, sometime I was, I picked up some girls and I was, like, was going to go party. And then some homies, like, see me. Oh, that's the dude, Rob Bob, or that's that motherfucker, Jack me. Let's get him. And then we driving down the street, like, doing gunplay, stupid shit like that. It's just a good thing that I'm good with weapons, Holmes. But I'm just saying, there's got to be a point in your life, dude, as a gangster, dude, or a drug dealer, or however you're getting your money. Let's say you're getting it through prostitution. I don't know, but it's on the dark side, Holmes. You got to get to a point, if you're smart, dude, that you got to realize, man, in America, I want to talk about America. I don't want to talk about other places because people always want to say, oh, you know, Colombia's corrupt, or Mexico corrupt, or Panama's corrupt, or Russia's corrupt, or whatever the fuck. America is one of the most corrupt countries in my opinion, in the world, and I've traveled, man, I've seen it, people want to, oh, China's corrupt, you know, uh, Vietnam's corrupt, man, America's corrupt, homie, only thing in America, and this is not a racial statement, I'm just sharing with you how it works, guys, so you guys can know it's okay to go from being a gangster to a businessman, but in America, you know, the white man speak with forked tongue, and what's that mean? Okay, so I'm part white, so I'm not, this is not a racial statement, what I'm saying is, when you look at corporate America, you look at these polished white dudes from Harvard or Yale with their hair slicked back. Yes, and basically the quarter projection for the first part of the year is our profits have went up substantially. We're going to therefore diversify our portfolio so that we can all gain from this windfall. Yay! Right? You look at them dudes, you think they're all squared up, homie. This is the, this is the, this is the magical game I want to put you guys up on. Dude, everything that glitters isn't gold, bro. Everything that looks like Pee Wee Herman, man, is not good, homie. No. And then, hey, dude, let me tell you about this dude named Ted Bundy, homie. He, he, was a, he was a lawyer, dude. He was a politician, dude. Handsome white dude, man. You know, polished, nice suits and everything, nice car, driving a Beamer, man. And he, he would play this role, man. He act like his arm was broke, homie. He put on a fake cast and he'd go to the supermarket and then he would ask him, oh, can you help me put this in my Beamer? And he's all dressed nice and everything. And these girls are like, oh, man, he's a white dude. I want to do some things to his, you know, his, his, his snake, right? That kind of look, dude, he looks successful. And then you get him to the car. Oh, can you, beep, oh, can you put it in the car for me? When they bend over in the car, he claw for him, homie. And you get him in the car, handcuff him while they knocked out. And then take him out and he got, he got a place in the woods, homie, where he did horrendous stuff to him, dude. Like, handcuffed him up, hands over head, dude, while he watched, while they having sex with fucking dead bodies and shit, and then dismembering them, crazy shit, right? He, he, crazy shit, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put him in there. I'm gonna put him in this motherfucker, Ted Bundy, man, the Ted Bundy story. So what I'm saying is this, Holmes, when you look at a guy, and I try to tell my, I try to tell a man, I try to tell a man, I got, I got a, I got a, I got one daughter, man, and um, when I got, when I got divorced, when I used to be a MGTOW, bro. I'm going to make a video about why I'm not a MGTOW. But I used to be a MGTOW, bro, and then my daughter was like, I'm going to support you because my, my, my ex-wife had took me to fucking court and said I was a terrorist, bro. Said I was, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was I was working for the Jihad, man, and I was like, take, I was stealing uh, corporate ideas and sending them over to the Middle East, man, and, you know, I was a terrorist and I was plotting to bomb the company and I was stealing... Like, dude, she made me have to be... You know what I'm saying? Because I used to... I used to study Islam, homie. That doesn't make you a terrorist. You know what I mean? You, you guys in America don't understand. You got, you got to embrace the Abrahamic religions, bro. That's Judaism, Islam, Christianity, man. The Abraham, 
the Abrahamic, man. So anyway, she made up this story, man. So they, you know, got not only did I get fired, bro, and then she said that, um, you know, she made up some stories that I had cut her with a knife, man, which I didn't. We got into a big argument, yelling and screaming. Cops came, so I got a, I got charged with attempted murder, uh, great bodily injury, kidnapping, all this st stuff, man, crazy shit, bro. Anyway, I got I got in the county jail, bro, and then they they wasn't gonna they wasn't gonna let me bail out, man. But then I hired a lawyer and a private investigator, cause you know that's why money's important. And so they got me out, man, so that I can be part of the private investigation. Anyway, long story short, I got proven innocent. But what the point I'm making is, my daughter, my middle daughter, came out to support me, and uh, she had this dude that thought he was a gang member, homie. And so let me just put it to you like this, homie. I've lived in New York. Detroit, Chicago, Philly, Pittsburgh, man, Virginia, Missouri, Oakland, Los Angeles, man, San Francisco, Sacramento. You get the point, man. I've been around, homie. I know real gang members, man. Like, you can tell a real gang member from a fake wannabe gang. This was a fake wannabe gang member. He was sag his pants, baggy shirt. You know, he thought it was hard, but he never smoked nobody, homie. He ain't never... Never made no drug money. He never put no work in. You know what I'm saying? So I told the dude, man, you know, I, I had some homies that had businesses. And I sent him down to get a job interview. So he went down there and he was sagging with the over the big T-shirt on, you know, and all that. You know what I mean? Just representing hood, right? So my, my friends called me up. Hey, OG Silverback. How, how are you? Great. What's going on, Bob? I'm not quite sure I understand here. You sent your son-in-law down here. And he's coming in with his pants sagging and the big big t-shirt on. And he's playing his rap music and everything. Bopping his head with his braids and everything. Like, what the fuck were you thinking, man? Like, he scared my fucking customers, man. I go, whoa, whoa. I'm, I didn't know Bob. Sorry about that. So when I confront my son-in-law, I say, hey, man, check this out, homie. When you go down there to get a job that I send you on, man. I said, represent yourself properly, man. Like, you know, pull your pants up, dude. Tuck your shirt in. Get a nice collar shirt. You know what I'm saying? Take your braids out, man. And then do something with your hair. And don't take your beatbox with you, dude. You know what he told me? Hey, man, you know, you're a fucking sellout, man. You're a fucking Oreo cookie, man. You're selling out to the man. Fuck that. I'm going to be true to who I am. So this is what I told him. And this is what I want you guys to understand. I told him like this, dude, if you think for a minute that those white guys that run those corporate offices like the CEOs and the vice presidents, directors and the managers with their suits on, their $5,000 suits on, their Rolex, if you think for a minute like some of those dudes aren't skinheads, dude, or Aryan Brothers or KKK, dude, whatever you're smoking, man, I want to smoke some of that, homie, because you are deluded, man. I said because, dude, the, the corporate environment, man, is a safe place where you come in and you play this public role. You play this public persona. It's a persona, bro. We're all actors. We all have acting ability within us, man. You know what I mean? If, if you don't believe it, man, check this out. When you went to court for your fucking sentencing, right? If you're like 80% of us, man, I'm sure you've tried to put the remorse for looking. If you're like, I'm so sorry. I'll never do it again. I mean, if you're facing life, bro. Are you facing a lot of time? You'd be like, I'm, uh, I'm so sorry for what I've done. If I could do it over again, I wouldn't do that, right? Yeah. You know how to play remorseful, motherfucker, so don't tell me you're not an actor, right? So this whole thing, man, about how to transform yourself from a gangster to a businessman, dude, is something to call. You got to fake it until you make it, man. And so with anything that we want to do, it first starts out with a thought in our mind, and you have to program your mind to think in a way where you want to take you want to take your street hustle and you want to clean it up man you want to legitimize i'll give you an example i'm not going to say any names so when i got out of the pen i had a homie that was a big time drug dealer man like you know what i mean like I, I was selling drugs too man but i was selling drugs more like to have um my money and power like i was just trying to stack my chips so the empire i built I made $3,000 profit a day. That's profit. That's after paying off my house mortgages, my workers, you know, tipping off some. I had to pay off police officers, man. Yeah. Like police officers, man. They're, police officers, let me say something. I'm going a little tangent here. Police officers are a trip. Because when they, when they arrested me, dude, 
the one police officer arrested me, man, I had a half a kilo, but then when I show up in court, they said I had a couple of ounces. You see my eyebrows, guys? So my naive ass, I say to my lawyer, like, hey, man, he talk, man, he talking about a couple of ounces, man, I had a half a kilo. And dude's like, shut the fuck up, man. The less drugs, the better. They're actually doing you a favor. I'm thinking in my head. Okay, favor or not, where'd all the other drugs go, right? So then you got these dirty officers that I had to pay because they knew I was drug trafficking. They knew what I was doing. Unfortunately for me, I didn't have enough money to pay all the crooked motherfuckers off. And that's why I got popped in Salinas fucking driving down fucking... Um, I don't. I, th I think it was. I don't think it was North Main, man. It wasn't South Main. Yeah, man. I think it was. Uh... Hey, dude. I think it was North Main, man. Yeah, man. I was coming from the hotel. Anyway, I didn't pay off enough officers because they had an APB all points bulletin out for me, and they see me in my fucking. I had a fucking Camaro, homie. I thought I was a. I thought I was a baller, and they pulled me over, man, and. uh... In that situation, man, I had a quarter key, and when I shoved the court, I only had a, only had like a couple ounces, right? So I'm saying the police, man, when they do these drug arrests, they take some of the drugs. They they get enough to arrest you really, really good with the guns, because if you got guns and drugs and a pager and shit, and you got paraphernalia like scales and shit, that's a wrap. So then they don't need to have a lot. And they take it and recirculate it out to the street. So just so you if you don't think police are involved in drug sales, homie, then you need to watch this video again. So <coughs> what I was trying to say is to my uh, son-in-law, if he, if he, dude, if you don't think some of those dudes are Kate Klansmen and shit and all that, man, when you go to work, you put on this pu you put on this public persona or office persona. That's why they say it's important that you. And and I've learned to circumvent this rule, but they say it's 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 not it's it's not good to mix business and pleasure. What that means is you can have some cool coworkers or let's let's get down to the quick here. If you see an attractive female in your office, bro, um, you don't want to dip your pen in company ink, man, because here's the problem if you're on parole or you're an ex felon or whatever and you're trying to um, transform yourself into a businessman. If you got this female in the office and she starts hanging out with you after the office, you might have a little bit too much to drink one time or some of your homies might come by or and she can put two and two together. So now she knows the pieces to the puzzle that the other people in the office don't know. And if things don't work out with you and your female, which nine times out of ten it don't because American women, dude, they got a whole nother level of um, what's acceptable in a relationship. And I think that for most guys to be in a successful relationship, you have to have the ability to kowtow your personality and to let her be, you know, the whole thing, women on the top. And I'm not talking sexually. I'm talking about just in the dynamics of the relationship. I don't believe there's a 50-50. In the old days, it was like, you know, 70-30 men was on top, women was submissive. Now it's the other way around. 70, it's 80-20. Um, 80% of women are on top, men are on the bottom. That's just my belief. So you don't want to dip your pen in company ink because then she should get the, the insider information about you. If it doesn't work out, which nine times out of ten it won't, then she's going to be dropping dirt in the office. It's going to mess. It's going to blow your cover. So the whole thing about transforming yourself from a gangster to a businessman is you have to take your street knowledge and look to find a way to either you have a point where you've made enough money where you just totally get out of that thing like what Jay I don't want to talk about Jay Z man because I, th I think he's still involved in drug trafficking I mean at a higher level like he's investing like he maybe he's not touching dope but I think like he's dropping some of his billions into the right hands and those people are just saturating the cities with dope and he's getting the profits without touch that's just my belief you know what I mean I think I think Fifty Cent's doing the same thing. I don't know. I don't know him, but I'm just saying I know enough people. I had this one homie. He was a big time drug dealer. Like when I was selling drugs, I just wanted to have a lot of money and power, dude. I wasn't thinking about cleaning it up. I just was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be like Scarface, right?" But I had a homie when I got out of the Pinto homes. He 
he's a big time drug dealer. So what he did was, I was like, dude, what's wrong with you? He's like, no, this time I got a plan, Holmes. He said, I'm going to make this much money that I'm getting out of the game. And he opened up a business. I'm not going to tell you the name of the business. But he opened up a business and became very successful because as he was building his inventory, and let's say, for example, he had a bad month and he would supplement the income from the the business with some drug deals. And then through his marketing and all this, he got really good. He put a lot of energy. Like he had a plan is what I'm trying to say. He put a lot of energy into his legitimate business. And once that took off to where he was making the same amount he was making when he was in the streets, he just quit the street stuff altogether. And I'm proud of him. I wasn't proud of how he made the transition. I'm just giving you an example. Here's what I'm suggesting on this video because this is a positive video, guys. I'm suggesting that whatever you're doing, dude, like um, get out of it immediately. Like, don't don't have an escape plan because I'm going to tell you something. The best laid plans of mice and men not sometimes go awry. They do go awry. It's just the way it is. Like, for example, here in Central California, we had these fires, man. Like, one day, you know, we're, we're laying here in the bed, dude, and you're hearing thunder and lightning. And you're like, oh, man, that's kind of weird because, uh, you know, when it's thunder and lightning, back east, it's raining. But out here, it's thunder and lightning. And there's no, there's not a cloud in the sky, right? It's just thunder and the thunder and lightning was like fucking... It was red. I've never seen red. I've seen blue lightning and white lightning and yellow. I've never seen red. And then the next day, there was fires, bro. Just crazy, right? So I'm like, what the fuck? And then they start coming down the mountains, bro, because I live in a valley. And they're coming down the fucking mountains, dude. You can see them for miles, dude. And you're like, what the fuck? You seen the animals, man, running down the fucking out of the fucking forest and shit? Like, you know, you just see little... Little bunny rabbits and squirrels and shit, man. And little chipmunks and shit, man. And you see deer just galloping and shit. And you see fucking mountain lions and bobcats. And then you see these bears running across the freeway and shit. And you see Bigfoot. Rawr. You know something's wrong. When the animals start running, homie, they <laughs> there's a saying. When the animals start running, you better start running too. So anyway, man, then they, they evacuate. I'm just saying unexpected things. So what happens, man, if you're in the game whatever game you're in or whatever affiliations you have. I would just say, I'm just letting you know, man, how to transform yourself from a businessman. I didn't say it was easy. I just said it's just very simple. I didn't say it was easy. You're just going to cut your ties. Like, you're going to stop immediately. Like, say, stop today. You're going to stop what you're doing. Pack your fucking shit up and move out of town, man. Move out of town. Meet somebody who can... Change your identity is very easy to do in the United States. You can change your identity. And then you just open up a business, man. And I'm going to tell you the most profitable businesses to get into, man. Like cryptocurrency and marijuana, man. Those are very profitable businesses to get into. And like I said, my, my videos are all about action plans. You know, like CBT is a big one as well. What I would do is I would approach a company as like an investor and say, hey... I want to invest in your company, man. You know, take your drug money. Maybe divide it into thirds, right? One third of it invest into a business. The other third, man, like you, um, you play you play the stock market, man. And the last third you use it was called a run rate or a burn rate. So let's say you don't have that kind of money. If you're, hey, I'll just sit back. You know, I think I'm a baller, and in my mind I'm a baller, and I want to just do myself and I'm a baller, but I'm not really a baller. Because let me tell you something about a real baller, man. Let me tell you about a real baller. And I'm not going to go into my personal business, but when I was on the street and I was selling drugs, I was making 3000 day a day profit. Like profit. That's about me re-upping. See, I'm talking about profit where it's outside of that whole re-up cycle, all that bullshit pain. Because... At the end of the day, net is different from gross. So my net was 3000 a day, right? And so then that's after I re-upped and everything like that, man. So if, if you call yourself being a big baller shot caller, or you run you run into deal and you ain't gotta let me tell you what let me tell you what they tell you in corporate America, man. You're a high status male if you got nine months of your salary in the bank at all times on top of your savings. Like you got savings that you never touch. And then you got a short-term savings for emergencies. But this is what's called your run rate. Look it up. Nine months salary. So you got nine months you can operate without any money coming in. If you're not doing that, then I think you need to get out of the game, dude. So say you're a young dude, you don't even know the game. I'm telling you right now, get out of the game. 
and find something that you're passionate in, man. Like, you know, a lot of guys are into gaming or whatever. I don't know how you can make money out of that, but I do know one thing for sure. You can get into, um, you can get into website design, man. You can make some money doing that, you know. Or, you know, I don't know, dude. I'm just saying, just look at, look at what drives you in the morning. I'm not talking about your legal business, but look at what drives you and start a business, dude. And just so you know, man, most businesses, man, it takes three to five years for the business to really, really start making a profit, dude. Just so you know. I mean, this is not a fantasy land video. This is not a pie in the sky. You know, I'm just telling you, man, to get out of the game because that game is a vicious cycle. And here's what happens, man. Only It's only three outcomes, man. You're dead. You're in prison. Or you're in a witness protection program. That's the only three. There's no happy ending. Fuck these movies. Hollywood's selling you a narrative that is not true. I'm here to tell you, man. So me, myself, you know, I uh, I transformed myself from a, a gangster to a businessman because what I did was I just changed all my associations. I no longer associate with dudes that do criminal activity. Am I judging them? No. I got some close associate homies that I've been to combat with. I love them like brothers. But the fact that they <coughs> are doing what they're doing... I choose a hands-off policy because it's just, um, you know, it's like, say, for example, if you were if you were an alcoholic and you, you decided to, you know, for health reasons not to drink anymore, you got some homies that drink and then they don't respect you enough to stop their drinking because their argument is like, hey, I'm going to stop drinking just because you're a drunk, dude. Like, And you got to respect where they're at, but you got to respect and love yourself enough to say like, hey, you know, no matter how much love I have for my homies, you know what I mean? Or my homeboys, or my peeps. I love myself first, man. Self love is the, the best love you can have, homie. And a lot of people don't have that. And so, all I'm saying is, you know, the, the way you transform yourself from a gangster to a businessman, you apply all of your street knowledge and your street savvy into something that is square, um, profitable, and legal. And you just get your hustle on, man. I think a good example of that is Wes Watson. I think another. Great example of that is Big Hurt, 916, dude. That dude took his hustle from the streets and he applied it and he diversified it. I'm not going to go into all Hurt's business. I don't, first of all, I don't know it all, but the dude is, is he's a fucking genius, man. Another one is uh, Michael Santos. Um, another one's Cali Muscle. These are all former guys that were incarcerated, you know, and I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Blackie from Nil to Zod, I think he's going into rap. So you got to find something that, you know, that really ignites your fire, man, and makes you want to put that kind of energy in because it's not an overnight sensation, guys. You know, and like I said, it takes one to five years, man, for your business to really, really, really get profitable depending on the market that you're in. But it beats the alternative, dude, because if you keep doing what you're doing in the game, homie, you're going to end up, man, if not underneath the prison, you're going to end up in a body bag somewhere because let me tell you something, man, there's always somebody crazier are smarter or better or more dangerous than you. I know that's hard. <laughs> that's a hard pill to swallow. It's a hard concept to swallow, but it is. It's true, man. And I can just tell you, based on some of the drug dealers I robbed, they were hard. They, these weren't no little soft dudes, but I, I was strung out on drugs. I didn't care if I lived or died, so we, we can just we can all die together, right? I'm not there today, and that's why I'm not in the game, because I know there's people out there like I used to be and so I'm just saying, man, the alternative uh, is not good. But the best way to transform yourself from a gangster to a businessman, the number one way is to change your mindset and to be, you want to legitimize everything you're doing so that you got a legitimate hustle, man. And you, you, put, you, put, you put your grind in just like when you're in the streets, homie. Like in the streets, you stay up two, three days just getting your grind in. Do the same thing in your business, man. And apply those street smarts, but then network with people that can help you as far as business-wise in a square way, dude. Because square is the way to go. The other way is, is, is short-lived. It's not worth it. And uh, for those of you who like this kind of content, man, this positive stuff, it's important that you thumbs up my video and like it, bro. It's very important. And also put some comments in there. Let me know your thoughts on there, you know, if you want me to cover some other topics. But most importantly, subscribe to my channel, dude. Do a play all. So you can see all the types of videos, the diversification of what I have. You know, go to my Facebook page, you like it. 
And then check out my website at fewstrongmen.com. And then if you want to support the channel, uh, subscribe to my Patreon. It doesn't have to be a lot, but every little bit helps because I think it's important as a community of men, we have to help each other to get out of this rat race and we being a slave to the system because all this, all incarceration is a form of modern day slavery. I'll get into that in some of my other videos, but for right now, I just wanted to say, hey man, you know, stop your hustle and stop your grind, the legal stuff, apply it to the positive stuff, man, and then let your life look up from there. Until next time, OG Silverback, out.